Good evening, everybody. Welcome to Borough Fan TV. Uh, James Hutchinson here. As you can see, it's a Wednesday, so we're in a different slot to our normal Monday night. Well, this is so we can reflect on the transfer window that closed yesterday, as well as looking back at Saturday's game against Blackburn Rovers at the Riverside. Uh, Join me to do this tonight are Tony Guest, David Campbell and Francis Fay. Welcome aboard, boys. Evening, all. Evening, guys. That as always, good. Borough fans, great to see you all again. Uh, we'd love to hear from you, as always. Uh, we've reached the first international break of the season, so share your thoughts with us tonight on the show regarding our progress both on and off the field. So, boys, there's going to be loads to get through tonight, um, and we'll go straight to the transfer window. We'll look at incomings first, lads. Um, Tony, uh, one that broke at the weekend was Anel Hernandez joining us from Norwich City on a season-long loan. Personally, I thought that was quite an exciting signing. What was your thoughts on it? Apart from Piero, obviously we haven't seen much of. It's it's the biggest signing and the most exciting signing. Warnock and Gibson have made this uh, transfer window. Like it's Norwich, the, the times I've watched him play for Norwich, he's always been a massive threat, and he's destroyed us a couple of times. Absolutely a fantastic signing, and I just hope Warner can bring the best out of him. I don't wasn't last season when they were in the Premier League, but the season before for Norwich, he was absolutely unplayable in some games. So let's hope we can see the best of him in a Borough shirt, and hopefully get him up to speed as soon as possible and get him in that team. Yeah, that's takes the, takes the focus away from Jones as well. Him down one side, Jones the left, and then it, it's just. It's just getting the right striker in the box and to take the chances that them two are going to create. Yeah. Go that's on, David, if you want to jump in, mate. Yeah, that's the thing, Tony. He's had no pre-season. He's been injured for the past two seasons on and off. So I think it's managing him rather than throwing him straight in there. We've just got to ease the expectations a little bit back on him because as, as good as he is, he could get injured and we're back to square one. Mm. Tony mentioned there, David, about having strikers on the end of things for Hernandez and the long-running saga of Andres Spora was finally resolved. It was never really in any doubt, really, was it, David? <laughs> oh, Jesus. Yeah, you didn't know whether it was coming or going. Um, but, yeah, it, we finally got there. And it's, it's an exciting signing. He's been prolific in the uh, foreign league. So let's hope he can come to the championship and do it. He's, he's obviously playing tonight and he's an international for Slovenia, so we know he's got some type of pedigree. And he's played against England before. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, let's just hope he gets the crosses in and gets us some goals. He's, he's going to want to do well because if he gets the 15 goals, then obviously it makes it into a permanent signing. So he's going to be coming in eager to impress. Yeah. Yeah. Evening, Damon. Evening, Stephen Gorby. Hope you're all well, lads. Francis, another addition on transfer deadline day was the Cameroon midfielder James Lee Saliki. Now, if he's uh, he's got some standards to live up with when you think of Joseph Job and Jeremy, former Cameroon players that have played for the Borough. Uh, but what do you see his role in the squad being? What I've seen on YouTube is a great passer of the ball. Um, I'm not quite sure what position he plays in midfield. I think he can play all over, like CDM, centre mid. Uh, my feeling is that he's came in to replace Sam Morsey because yeah. Sam Morsey's obviously gone gone, and he's came straight in. So I don't know whether or not he's came in to replace Sammy. So I'm not too sure. But it's, it's exciting. Someone new to have a look at. He excites me the most out of all the signs we've done over the transfer window. I mean, yeah, obviously what? Cameroon International, but he's played in the Champions League. He played against Chelsea uh, a couple of seasons ago and... Obviously, from what I've seen of him, I, I like him. So, and I think he's what we need: someone who can break up a bit of play, get that range of passing, and he, he's not scared to be on the ball. Yeah, Tony, it was mentioned there by Francis about uh, Sam Morsi, and that was—I think that's caught a lot of people by surprise. His departure and moving on to Whipswich Town. What's your thoughts on Morsi leaving, and do you think we're set up to cover his loss? Yeah, I think that's what the. Like you say, the Cameroon lads come in for. Uh, uh, obviously, we're not privy to what goes on. Maybe there's been something going on behind the scenes with Marcy. Uh, 
he never started the season. He's, he's, he's been on the bench a couple of times. I think he's played the last two games, though. But I think there's been a... Maybe he's fell out with someone along the line. Like you say, it was come totally left field. I wasn't expecting him leaving, you know, in, in front of the likes of Alson, if you like, you know what I mean, or McNair. I thought he'd come, you know, I thought he was going to be part of our future. And I think it's a massive surprise, not for him just to leave the borough, but to take a step back into League One, which, yeah. you know, which tells me he's took the first chance he can get to get out of the club. Tony, do you think it might be discipline issues or anything like that in terms of not so much anything behind the scenes, but how maybe Sam Morsi is on the field? I mean, he got sent off, which we'll get to later on in the when we chat about the Blackburn game, but do you think it's maybe on-field issues? But at the end of the day, that's what you get with Sam Morsi, isn't it? Yeah, I, 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 can't, I honestly can't see it being anything around that. You know what I mean? Especially mm. the way Warnock likes his players to be committed. You know, so I, I can't see that have been a problem. Uh for me, he's just a totally committed central midfielder who likes to get stuck in, James, and it's a massive surprise that he's left the club. I think I think the majority of the Riverside is in the same state of surprise as what we are. Uh, never expected Marcy to leave, not on the cat and Nell's chance. There was other players that I'd like to see go before him. Interesting. Damon's got in touch again then. He said, I had a feeling that Sam Marcy would leave. Because of the red card and his attitude after the QPR game, um, he was in a bad mood. Well, I think obviously sometimes players, it depends, take defeat in different ways. And obviously, as you said, Tony, we're not privy to what goes on behind the scenes. But do you think maybe in a way, Francis, it leaves us a little bit short in that middle department? Or do you, do you see Saliki stepping into that role? Or do you think Warnock's maybe got other plans or other options that he wants to use? I think we'll be all right in that position because it's not only him who can play there. We've seen Alston and McNair can play all over the pitch. So, if Warner could have like other um, options, um, but I think we'll be all right in that part of the midfield because, like you say, we've not only got Alston and McNair, we've, all, we've got young kids as well. I know Eden Acne's gone out on loan, but yeah. we've got Conor Malley. Yeah. It, could, yeah. it could open a path. It could be a pathway for us to see more of Piero as well. Do you know what I mean, James? Yeah, you know, true. It could be <clears throat> that could be the reason I'm behind it. You know, to give, you know, to eventually blood the kid into the first team and get him start starting more regular. Yeah, yeah personally, I think Crooks will uh, step back into that number eight position. I think he'll go into centre midfield. Right. <clears throat> Interesting thoughts, boys. Michael Pellin, evening chaps. Best window the club have had for a number of seasons. It's certainly been one where we've been really active and. Talking of outgoings, David, um, your favourite players departed the club this afternoon on a season-long loan. But again, quite a surprise to many, especially his destination with Jed Spence going to Nottingham Forest. Yeah, I was a little bit late back because I've just dropped him off at Forest. But, uh, <laughs> no, it's, uh, I'm, I'm just a little bit surprised because even though I'm not his biggest fan, in the slightest, <laughs> he started the season relatively okay. And it looked like Warner could start getting a bit of a tune out of him. But what surprised me is it's not a wage bill issue because he won't be on much money. But it's the fact that we haven't got much cover there with Daniel Fisher being out for the season. Yeah, It's a bit of a strange one. So that indicates to me it's more of a personality and attitude problem why Warner's got rid. And I think that Sam Morsi, Lewis Wing, Savile, Akpom, Ott, Britt, Fletch, all these people who have had problems with Warner can disagree with him are out the door and I think that's that shows Warnock's ruthlessness and it doesn't matter if they've been here six months or nine months he's not going to tolerate any bullshit it's by the looks of it wasn't Gestead one as well yeah that was, that was the season before wasn't it and and uh my little ponytail, what's he called? He went to Birmingham. Clayton. He, Clayton. You know, he, he, someone got rid of them. But like you say, personally, I, I think Spencer start the season really well there. Yes, yeah, sometimes he is a bit loose in possession and he gives the ball away a lot when he's trying to take players on. But I think that's a lot down to confidence that, you know, the poor season he had last year. But at the end of the day, 
he's gone to Nottingham Forest, one of the biggest clubs in the championship. Uh, two times European Cup winners, and it's not going to do him any harm at all going to a club like that. I know they're in a bit of bother at the moment, but hopefully he can get a, a full season under his belt and come back to us raring to go. But guess how does it benefit the boy? Because he's on pittance and we've sold him to a rival and left ourselves short in a in a vital position if Dyke still gets injured. It just I think the, the way I think the one the way Warnock plays and he, he's been on the, the radio today, he's got Johnny House to play right back at the end of the day. You know what I mean, Dave? So Housen's okay. came out and you know, singing from the same in sheet he was a couple of seasons ago saying he'll play in any position for us. So I think that covers mm. there with Housen. Do you know what I mean, Dave? Do you think yeah. part of the problem, Francis, is we talked before we came on air tonight and we were saying the problem maybe a little bit with Jed Spence is he's not really got the defensive now to play as a right back and he's not really got the attacking ability to play wide right as an attacking player. He sort of falls between the two stools and maybe Warnock's thought, I can afford to move him on, even if it's just in a temporary role on a loan deal. He doesn't sort of fit a, a specific position to the Borough at the moment. Yeah. Um, then again, he might not be a Warnock player. Do you know what I mean? Warnock might just not like him because you do get players like that. But him going out on Forest on loan, I know he can do it here, but he can he can learn that out on Forest on loan. Do you know what I mean? Like you said, I know he can do that here. I mean, he'll probably get first team football at uh, Nottingham Forest. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Christian Lamb thinks he'd work well in a 3 5 2 at wing back. So that's possibly. Yeah where some people may see his best position. Um, just another, well, I was just going to mention, here, Steve Davis, very happy, evening lads, happy with Steve Gibson's uh, backing of the club and Neil Warnock again, and El Hernandez, the one to watch. Another player that's departed, though, David, uh, not really much of a surprise, we spoke about it last week, he was in the pipeline, was Chu Barakpom. Um, I thought it was quite telling that Warnock said as he departed that he didn't show me enough in the games where I played him to warrant a run of games and, that just didn't work out at all, did it, David? It didn't. It was wasted money. And like I said on last week's show, I think a lot of the blame has to go on Warnock rather than just blaming Akpom. I think he's used him as a bit of a scapegoat and throwing him under the bus. If he wants, if he comes back and he has a successful season, obviously if Warnock's on bail, he's going to have a year on his contract. So let's not write off his Borough career yet because he might come back a different player next season with a different manager. I just think his man management towards Akpom has been shocking. He he might talk about he's not performed, but if you go to work and your boss is slating you out in the press, you're not going to perform to your best. So, I, you know, I think there's a lot of stuff Warnock needs to look at himself there. But look, if he goes and gets 15 goals in the Greek League, he might come back a different player. Yeah, fair points made. But yeah, let us know, Borough fans. Do you agree with David's opinions there with regards to Neil Warnock and his man management of certain players? Um, other members that have left the squad just on a temporary basis, though, Tony, uh, Nathan Wood, Stephen Walker, Hayden Hackney. Um, what have you made of their deals and where they've moved to? Do you think it's good experience for them? Yeah, I'm surprised Nathan Wood's gone out on loan again. I think he's done his fair share of loans now. Maybe he just needs to build his the top half of his body to look more imposing. You know, he's still... He still looks quite fresh, but Stephen Walker, I honestly don't know where his Borough career has gone. He's, he's had his chance, he's come in. He's, when I when I first seen the kid, he, I thought he was exciting, he was cheeky. You know what I mean? He, he was getting the crowd going in one cup match I seen him. But it's just never really took off. It's, it's just really never took off. But with the likes of Cobb and Walker, unless they get the chances here at the Borough, we're never really going to know what they were like, you know what I mean? We've got rid of Akpom because, you know, he's he, he is a he is a poor centre forward. He, he was never going to be prolific. But are we going to find out if these kids are going to move to the next stage, you know, loaning them out all the time? Mm -hmm. I haven't followed Stephen Walker that much while he's been out on loan, but I, I don't think he's been filling his boots wherever he's been as well. And Acne... He's another one we haven't seen enough of, James. Now, whether you know whether it stands the club in good stead 
send them out on loan. You only have to look at the kid at Chelsea now. Uh, Chalabar, he's been all over yeah. the place. Yeah. And, you know, the kid fell in lucky and he, he, I think he's got a squad number this season with Chelsea. So, if it can happen at Chelsea, it can happen at the Borough. And, and hopefully there's a, there's a gem on, amongst the, them three lads we've just been talking about when they eventually do come back to the Borough. Yeah. Yeah. I'm I mean, I think the Nathan Wood one, I think he's got a great move there going to Hibs. I think it's um, he's yeah. going to really test yeah. himself up there. I think that, that's a good move for him. I think it's a step up from the moves he's had so far. Um, yeah. As you say to him, a little bit, I'm not sure where Steve Walker fits in with things. He's been at Crew, MK Dons, who have been League One clubs. Now he's gone to a League Two club on loan. And I'm, yeah. I'm just wondering, are we going to see him in a Borough shirt again? I'm, I'm, very, I'm very doubtful, if I'm being honest. Yeah. By the way, I agree with Bernardo Franklin Fortuna. What he's saying about Amiobi. <laughs> well, yeah, it's uh, we brought him in, and he, he's coming obviously to fill in a specific role in the club. But at the minute, it's just in the treatment room, and it's gone very quiet with regards to how long he's going to be out for. It, it, it's a worry, you know, isn't it, Francis? That he would have been involved, no doubt, if he'd have been fit. But there's no sign of him being involved in the near future, is there? Yeah, I was just Thank about God. to say with him, with him, I, I don't mm-hmm. think he's going to get in the squad. He'll get in the squad, but on the bench, because we've got better players than him on the wings. We've just got Hernandez, we've got Jones, we've got Tav. So it's going to be hard to fit him in. And I didn't want him anyway. I, I was like, Tony, he's just going, like, we're just been going back. Franny, he's been brought in to keep Gusted's physio busy. That's <laughs> all he's been brought in for. Yeah, I think uh, signings of the wingers indicate that Amiobi's box he's going to be out for the majority of the season. It certainly yeah. appears that way, doesn't it? Yeah, I mean, another one that, that slipped the net. I, another one that slipped the net, David. I, I don't know how you feel about it and what your thoughts are. Um, Mitchell Van Bergen. It had the big build up. He was coming from Heron V. Um, and Neil Warnock again mentioned last week in his press conference. That for whatever reason, inside the club, we haven't been able to get the deal over the line for one reason or another. Do you think it's fault on our side or do you think it's the fact that we've maybe been played by an agent a little bit there? I think a bit of both. I think, obviously, we take time, look at the Sporare deal and we take our times over these deals and I'd, I'd, you're always leaving opportunities for other people to come in. Look, Stad Ram's playing the top league in France, so I'm sure he's probably going to be on similar money of what he was going to be on here but he's going to be playing against well he played against Messi he asked for his shirt didn't he so yeah. but he's going to be playing against better standards players I like the look of him because I think I thought it was something different that he was direct and pace but when he didn't come and we got Hernandez it didn't it it, it was like for like for me it, it, you know I was just as excited getting Hernandez as I was Van Bergen so yeah it's another one who slipped through the net and how many times have we seen players like Lindelof who could have joined Borough and then gone on to bigger, better things. And let's just hope it's not another one of them in the future. Yeah. Uh, Ryan, Love, <laughs> Ryan Love's been in touch, boy. said, I think Steve Walker's future may permanently lie in League One or League Two. Um, and Liam Wilde's been in touch as well. Lads, did you expect one to get 12 players in? Me, personally, I didn't. And again, Francis, we were speaking before the show. And yes, we brought 12 players in, but... It's sometimes not noted that 14 players after Spencer's departure today have left the squad from the end of last season. So what was already a small squad is, in terms of bodies, even smaller than last season now, isn't it? Yeah, 100%. The 12 players we've brought in, I'm happy with. But like you said, the players that have gone out, we've still got a small squad. And I think we could have done with a few more, four or five more. We've, we've, we can still get... Uh, what they're called free, free, agents, free, agents, free yeah. agents but um I, I think we could have we should have got or at least tried to get four or five more signings in because we're still short like you said if Dykesdale gets injured and Spence just gone out on loan I've got I think Peltier can play there but I'd rather have Spence there just I know Peltier's got the experience but I don't know I just like Spence better than him yeah you're losing that when you're playing Peltier and i.e. Dale at full-backs, it's, it's taking a lot of pace out of our our attack. Do you know what I mean, Fra- uh, Franny? Yeah. So, 
personally, I think we'll, we'll if if I'm t- you know touch wood, now happens to Dyke Steele, you know what I mean? Because he, he's been immense. So hopefully, and you know, at least hopefully we can get forty games out of him this season. But like you say, we've made twelve signings. We've just been discussing one there. It looks like he's out for the rest of the season, Amiobi. I think one of them was a, re- a reserve goalkeeper as well. So, like James said, we haven't brought that many players in. And with so many going, it, it, it does leave us a bit thin. But the way Warner chops and changes, you know, it, it shouldn't it shouldn't affect us too much. It's just... Like you say, we're going to discuss the Blackburn game. We've just got to get away from these draws, which we which aren't worth a toss in this league. <laughs> the only thing that worries me is that we keep hearing about how good our dressing room has been over the last couple of seasons, and then when you bring in twelve players and let fourteen goes in, you've started the whole rebuild again, and you're gonna yeah. have to. Luckily, we've got Saul Bamba and Peltier and Housen in there who are experienced heads. But other than that, everybody's going to be finding the feet within the club, not knowing people, not knowing the catering staff. That takes that that goes a long way. People might not just see that, but that in the, goes a long way in terms of uh, results. You know, having a happy squad, and that, that's going to take a while to gel. Yeah. When you're on about uh, young players there, like going out on loan, we've got Josh Coburn. What do you think is going to happen with him? I know, I know he hasn't gone out on loan, but is he going to get his game? I'd be surprised to see him starting games, if I'm honest, Franny. I think he'll be one that's yeah. on the bench as backup. Like, he won't start games, no, but like, no. do you think he'll have an impact? Like, come on, or... Well, surely that'll hamper his development, Franny, don't you know, do you know what I think? Yeah. yeah. I think he's got to play under-23 football and mix with the first team as well, do a bit of both. Yeah. On the players that were brought in as well, well, I like the look of against Blackburn, like you said. I know we're going to talk about it, but Olesan, yeah, he looked, he looked a real good player. Him. And it's interesting. I mean, I've had I just flashed up one of the comments there from David Bertram. Thanks for getting in touch, David. And he said he doesn't expect much this season. We're still mid-table for, and this is a transition season. But Tony, how many more <clears throat> transition seasons can we afford? Because Again, Neil Warnock mentioned that probably the best bit of business the club have done this transfer window is holding on to the likes of McNair, Tav and Fry. But they ain't going to just stay if it's another mid-table season because they're going to need for their own careers to be playing at the top level, certainly Tav and Fry. And this year we've got to have a real serious push for top six, haven't we? Yeah, this has got to be our season. Obviously, because obviously Warnock stayed for the extra two year. For the two seasons last season persuaded him to stay for this season to you know to really have a push for promotion and it'll be interesting to see where we are come january because like you say i know we've got all these signings but we we as personally as a fan i think we're going we're going to struggle to get these players bedded in and it's how much ground we can allow to give up to make a challenge once we get past the new year. Sometimes it happens, sometimes signings come in and totally transform the way teams play in the championship. And I'm just hoping Warner's magic it works on these players. Like you say, we've got the we've got the backbone there, we've got Dale, we've got McNair, we've got Owson, we've still got a you know a few old hands. Dyke Steele's come in, you know, it's after after being loaned back out when Wood Woodgate had gone, Warnock's turned him and bowler. In the starters every week for me, and the nucleus of that old team still there. That when when Warnock first come in, and hopefully, and the, these can these lads can guide these new players, you know, and let them know what it's like to play for the Borough in front of a full, well, in front of some red seats and a lot of passionate Borough fans at the Riverside. So let's just fingers crossed and come the next international break. We might have some idea where our season's going to go. Yeah. But like you say, you're looking at Fulham and West Brom now, and and already they look like they're going to need to take some catching. And they're the two teams we, we should be looking at, and playing somewhat similar to if we want to go up. Interesting. Yeah, I can't see Gibson saying it's a transition period after he spent all that money in the summer. No, Gibson, Gibson will want. 
Yeah. Gibson yeah. will want results now. Yeah. Gibson will, you know. And Franny, Mick, ST, and also uh, we've had other viewers uh, getting in touch with us as well. I've been saying about free agents that can possibly come in now. And um, obviously uh, the low market's still available and the players can still come in. Is there anyone that you'd like to see come in or any free agents out there that you've thought, yeah, I could see them doing a the job? And if so, what sort of positions do you think we're maybe a little bit short in? I say defence again. Um, I, I, I say one in every position. Like obviously defence, midfield, and attack. I don't actually know who's available. I haven't had a look. I know like Andy Carroll's uh, available, but um, yeah, I, I say one in each of every position. Um, obviously cover for like Stephen Baller. Uh, we've just got a uh, Sparora. Um, that he could have cover for Ik Piazza. We've got. I'd probably say defence. Yeah. Defence, uh, David. Um, it's obviously been mentioned. Matthew Groves got in touch. Said from the first few games, we've looked very open in midfield. Letting Marcy go for me is a mistake. Um, the window's closed now. Are you happy in general with the club's work? And do you think we're in a better position than before the start of the summer to mount a challenge on the top six this year? Or do you think we're in roughly the same place? What's your thoughts, David? No, I definitely think we've progressed. Um... I've just seen Damon say Keen Bryan, who was released by Sheffield United. He's so an hard goal for because he can play centre half and he can play left back. So he's one for me. But in terms of the window, I think it's the best window we've had in at seasons. Um, I know people talk about the Premier League of Valdez and who we got him, but look, we got relegated. So I yeah. think we've really made steps forward. And what's impressed me is how we've done the business with the obligation to buy on the loan deals. We've seen it work at other clubs who have been a little bit smart doing businesses that way, like Brentford, when they got loans from abroad and turned them to permanent. So, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm impressed. And before, I always said I wanted to wait to the end of the window. And now we're there, I think there's no reason why this squad shouldn't push for number six, a top six. We've got a bit of versatility, which I, I'm happy with. David, do you think maybe in a way that the dealings that the club have made, particularly in the last couple of weeks, do you think that's linked with Kieran Scott appearing on the scene in the last month? Or do you think it's just a coincidence that that's happened? 100%. He's obviously gone through the interview process and uh, like you do, yeah, he's not worked for the club till, well, today officially started. But yeah. there's there's no doubt in my mind in his interview, we, you know, he's been saying of how he plans to negotiate deals and what strategies he's going to do. He might not have dropped names for signings, but he'll set down his mark on which way he's going to go. And I think Bowser might have looked at that and thought, yeah, you know, why let's, why not? Why wait till January, which would have been the next window for Scott to put his stamp down and do it now? Um, I, I think it's very impressive work. Yeah. No. Edward Lewis has been in touch. Thanks for watching, Edward, and saying recruitment will only get better with Kieran Scott in charge now. Um, and Chris Sykes been touch up you well, Chris. Good squad. Now let's see if it can get them to gel, and that's the big thing. Um, Tony, we're going to look at the black I feel, game. Come I, feel, I feel we've been saying let's see if they can gel since Gary Monk made all <laughs> them signings. You know what I mean? And like you say, this is a this is a this is a make or break season for us as a club, and we can't afford now. I know you've said they were patient as fans, but we. We can't afford to fall too far behind. But I've just mentioned it before. We have we have to hit the ground running with these signings. And Isaiah Jones, he's, he's tortured absolutely every defence he's played against this season. And like you say, now this Sparora, that that's gonna you know give Warnock a headache. Is he gonna play Ikpizu up front or Sparora, Sparora, or is he gonna play them up both together? You know, exciting times, really. You know, we could just be totally transformed into a team that's just going to absolutely run at teams. Uh, on the midfield, people have been mentioning there in the comments, and I totally agree. To lose Marcy, yeah, it's bad. But what well, I've seen up and out this season, we are missing Savile as well. We've never filled the Savile void for me. Uh, I think he tried to fill it a bit on Saturday with playing out and a bit further forward. So, yeah, we, we've two committed midfielders. Maybe that what why we are a bit loose in the midfield at the start of the season. But, you know, 
the three games at the Riverside so far have been three of the best games I've seen for a long time. Okay, mate. I think well, uh, the formation's going to be interesting because mm. the squad we've got now and how short we are in defensive, I can't see us going win backs because I just can't see where we've got the covering and depth to, to play that way. Mm. Yeah. David Paul's been in touch as well, boys. He said uh, it's a massive risk. Warwick's taken with the ins and outs. He's having a good gamble with the signs he's made, but I still think we need to keep a few players and not let them go as easy. Um, and Steve Davis back in touch again, guessing he said, I like Crooks, to be fair. I think he's a good replacement for Saville. I think what's not in doubt, boys, is that we're still going to be talking about uh, possible incomings over the next few weeks, even though the transfer window is closed, as uh, Neil Warren will possibly look to make further additions to his squad. But we'll move on from that now, lads, and we'll go back to last Saturday's game with Blackburn. Um, Francis, um, the absence of Vucci Ikpiazu from the starting line, again, highlighted our lack of forward options. How disappointed were you to see the big man miss out on the game, but how do you think we coped in his absence? Um, I think I thought we missed him massively. Um, I think he was ill. I think it was bad. Mm -hmm. But you could see, like, we, we missed him. Uh, what we were missing in that game was a goal scorer. And that's what we need. I, I thought we played really well against Blackburn. I think we should have won the game. Um, but that's what we were missing, Nick Piazzo. And obviously we can't do no, nothing about him being ill. But uh, what, what more front? I, I wouldn't have put him up front. I would have put Crooks up front and maybe what more on the right or left or behind him. Um, but yeah, I, I thought we played really well and we should have won it. Yeah. Uh, David, you went with back three again, but this time with another different set of personnel playing there. How did you think they managed on the day? I think we just tried matching uh, Blackburn's formations and, you know, I, I agree with what uh, Francis was saying. I thought we, we were the better team and we, we played with some real nice football, but I just had, look, we couldn't have stopped the goal, but they didn't really threaten us other than the wonder strike. So, you know, I think tactically it got it spot on, but Saturday's performance just highlighted what we needed in the last couple of days in the window, didn't it? And Tony, as David's mentioned there, Blackburn's only shot on target was their goal. And that, that was the only shot they had on target in the 90 minutes. So how disappointed do you think Neil Warren would have been with that? Or do you just think he holds your hands up to a great strike? No, I think he'll have been very disappointed because we we give the ball away in a, a dangerous position in front of our in front of our goal. Do you know what I mean? Uh, when the danger should have been cleared. <clears throat> like you say, <clears throat> excuse me, the kid took his chance really well. Do you know what I mean? But it's one of the few games we can talk about where, after conceding, Borough totally dominated the full game. We never see, it's very rare we see the same Borough in both halves. But once we conceded the goal, we just totally dominated that game. And like young Franny said there, we were a goal scorer away from, you know, getting another two points. That That's all that was missing on Saturday. Just to turn that possession in the profits, do you know what I mean, James? Because yeah. some of the football and and when we had Blackburn boxed in, it's a first first time for a long time since we've done that to a team. It, it was it was real, it was good on the eye. You know what I mean? Don't get me wrong, yeah. James. But it's another two points dropped at home, and like you say, it totally highlighted the the, the need for us to have a you know a goal scorer. What more started up front, but. He still doesn't look sharp yet. Do you know what I mean? And he doesn't look as sharp as what he did when he came into the team last season. So I think Warwick himself admitted he was he's nowhere near match fit. He just more or less played him out of necessity. He said he wasn't match ready in any sort of right. shape or form. Right. But like you say, I'd have preferred to see Crook start, you know, centre forward. Warwick's used him. Warwick's put him into that position when he's took Ikpizu off a couple of times this season. And he stuck Crooks down the middle. So, but like you say, he's a, he's a manager. He lives and dies by his decisions. And I, I, I can't say Warner cost us two points on Saturday because it was just a case of what getting the clean strike on goal or getting it in off. That that was the only difference. And it was it was. Don't get me wrong. I was really frustrated watching the second half because I knew 
I felt we were two goals better than Blackburn, but it just just didn't happen for us, James. We didn't really create a chance in the second half to say, yeah, you know, but get Tav up to speed. Tav started buzzing about, you know, he looked a bit more interested on Saturday. You know, like you say, it's going to be really interesting. We've got all these attack-minded players now, so let, let's just see where we're going to go. Yeah. Matthew I thought Johnny Anderson was excellent, mate. He got, he got dropped against Derby. He came in against Blackburn. He was spot on. Man of the match for me. And he took, he obviously scored as well, but I didn't think it was going to go in me. He obviously went in off the post. I just thought, I just thought it was brilliant. Yeah. Oh, Johnny Housen. Yeah. He's gone from villain to hero again, Johnny Housen, hasn't he? Yeah. Everyone was saying his legs have gone. He's, a, you know, get rid of him. He's too old. Warnock's played him a, a more advanced position against Blackburn and he's profited from it. You know, he was on the edge of the box in the first half. He was trying to get shots fired off. And like you say, his goal, like you say, luckily luckily enough, he had plenty of the target to shoot at and he managed to clip it in off the post. But, you know, Borough fans, Borough fans amaze me. He's, he's a crock one minute, his legs are gone, and the next minute he's busting his gut to run onto a pass. By the way, what a ball. What a ball by Dyke Steel. You know what yeah. I mean? Absolutely yeah. fantastic ball. Yeah. With David, Housen, do you think he's going to need a break, isn't he? Because he, he can't play three games a week. Do you think he'll he'll benefit? I know you mentioned earlier on about playing alongside maybe Matt Crooks. Do you think he's the ideal partner to play with him in the middle, or would you go with somebody else? Or would you go for a different partnership altogether? No, I think Housen and McNair, giving it time, I think. What you, if you're going to play House and McNair, you need that third centre midfielder in there who can be a little bit more creative, like Crooks or Piero. And I think with the squad he's got now, he is going to go down the 4 3 3 route, um, personally. And if he is going to do that, I'd like to see Crooks drop into the number eight. And then I think you'll see that a bit of fluid, fluid, fluidity, fluidity. The that's the one throughout the team, then. Um, because I think Housen likes to roam. He's not very disciplined. Where Morsi was disciplined, he could just sit and be the holder. And yeah, I think it's a, it's interesting. You could have different partnerships in that midfield who offer something different. And that James Saliki as well. We don't know what exact position he's planned as well. Yes. Yeah. No. Interesting. Right. And Tony, as were last season's game against Blackburn, um, the officials came under the spotlight again. Um, and they copped a fair bit of flack in the aftermath. Looking at the two red cards, first of all, what was your thoughts on Hayden Carter from Blackburn's red? Was it justified or not for you? Yeah, just totally justified. Uh, lifted his foot, you know. Who was it he caught in the head? McNair. Yeah. McNair lifted his foot. And I was expecting a straight red straight away. I don't know what all the other blue was about. You know what I mean? Like, after what happened with Dale Fry the season before, maybe there was a bit of that in the referee's mind. Do you know what I mean? And he was making up for last season. I know it wasn't the same referee, but, you know, giving us one back. But to, after that decision, the, the referee just totally lost the plot anyway. You know what I mean? Sam Morsey was not a cat and else. I don't even think he caught the lad, James, he, even when you're looking up close. And it was... You know, I think it was just one for them and one for us. And just totally spoiled, totally spoiled the game. Go on, David, what you got to say there, mate? Tony, don't you think he was daft after he just sent a guy off for a high foot to put himself in that position? I know he didn't catch him, but it was reckless. Yeah, we've seen a few already, Dave, haven't we, this season like that? But like you said, in the heat of the battle... And they'd just gone down to 10 men. You know, it, it, it most probably lifted him, give him that extra 10% to want to win the ball back. You, you, you know, till, till we've been in that position, we'll never know, Dave, why he, he dived in. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, you're probably just... in the, the red card, but obviously it doesn't matter now. No. <laughs> well, that's, I, don't, I don't know if we will still appeal. I mean, there's not much point unless that was no, part of the transfer, transfer deal with Ipswich. But Francis... Um, Toyosi Olasanya came on. What did you make of his first out in a bunch of shirt? I thought he 
was really good. Played really well. He nearly scored it all. He nearly got the winner. Um, he looks exciting. He looks fast. Uh, um, he's only young as well, isn't he? Is it? We've signed him, haven't we? Yeah, yeah. From non league team, yeah. Yeah, he, he could be the future. Him and Jones. But yeah, they looked really good. What a sign from him. And Tony uh, Mogger in charge of Blackburn again. I thought it was quite interesting after the game that he said uh, <laughs> it takes two teams to play a football match, and Middlesbrough deny you doing that. Do you read anything into those uh, comments? Yeah, he doesn't like Warnock. <laughs> <laughs> If that's the last couple of seasons he's had a, a right dig at us, you know what I mean? Uh, like you say, I, I can't believe what he came out with last season. But yeah, well, he's right in a way. We do make we do stop teams from playing football. We yeah. make life difficult for them. But that's the way it's been. What since Pulis came in, that that's what we us as fans have had to live with, and opposition managers. So I think he just has to take his medicine and, and you know and I don't think they're a great footballing team this season anyway I think they're going to struggle especially like you say they've lost Armstrong I think they're going to struggle for goals as well definitely so, he just needs to put his dummy back in Dunny, and you know get back on red to see front have a lemon top and it might cheer him up if he goes home for a bit <laughs> I don't care Warnock was dead complimentary about Mowbray before the game as well wasn't he yeah. He was last season as well. Yeah. <laughs> I think you're right, Tony. I think for whatever reason, it just seems to... Neil Warnock maybe just seems to rub Tony Mowbray up the wrong way a little bit and uh, he, he yeah. just seems to like to have a little bit of a dig back after the games. And I don't deny that we're difficult to play against, but I think that's just all part and parcel of being a team in the Championship, isn't it? Yeah, like you say, there's a lot of Championship games which can, you know, fall either side of the sword if you like, you know... There's that many two ones or one ones in this league. It's just it's it's just do want it more on the day. Do you know what I mean, James? And like you say, the the results again this season have already proved that. Look at QPR; they, they looked absolutely fantastic against us. And the next game, the two nil down to Barnsley after twenty minutes. Do you know what I mean? So, we, we, I don't think we're. Like you say, I said earlier, West Brom and Fulham are miles ahead of everyone else at the moment, and it, it's up yeah. to us to catch them up. Yeah, I'm going to come to you all in turn now, lads, because obviously we haven't got any predictions this week with the being no Borough game. But instead of predicting the match, what I want you to consider is we're five games into the league season, and we've got six points on the board. What's your take, lads, on our start of the season, and do you think we are real contenders, credible contenders for a top six place this year? I'll come to you first, Francis. So, but what's your thoughts after the first five league games, mate? I'm happy to be honest. Like you say, the game against Blackburn, we, like the games we've played, I think we we've been unlucky not to get the winner, like against Blackburn and QBR. But I'm happy. It's a good start. Six points on the board, and we're, we've got obviously Coventry and Forest away next. The, the winnable games, then along with Blackpool. I know anyone can beat anyone, but. The team we have compared to Coventry, Forest, and Blackpool, we should be beating, like we should be beating them. And I think with us this season, I've got a feeling no one's going to have an easy game against us. Like it's it's going to be hard. We're going to put up a fight. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And I, I don't think it's going to be often you're going to see us lose two games, two three games in a row. Mm -hmm. Well, fair points made there, Franny. No problem with that, mate. Liam Wilde said, next three games, Coventry, Forest and Blackpool, I'll take nine, uh, seven points out of nine. I'll definitely take nine out of nine. Liam said he'd be happy with seven out of nine. I mean, himself, are happy with the start? Do you think it could have been better? Maybe a few more points on the board? Yeah, potentially a few more but, uh, points on the board. But, look, I was never worried about what happened in August because, uh, obviously, looking at the bigger picture, was getting the players and then, yeah, I know, getting them to gel. Anything we got as results was just a benefit but we haven't been outplayed which is you know by any team in particular we all thought we were going to get turned over by Fulham and we put up a good fight so you know there's been positives to start and I think even September it's just about seeing if you can nick a win it here and there I think October November the team should have had time to gel and that's when we need to start assessing us properly on moving forward but I, I think we've got a team that could finish in the top six 
guessed he, I think he's hit the nail on the head. Fulham and West Brom are, 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 you know, way above us. And I think you can put Bournemouth in that bracket as well. But other than those three teams, I think the other three places are up for grabs and it's just who wants it the most. Yeah. Go on, Tony. What do you reckon? Do you reckon we have got a realistic chance of making top six this season? God, I, I always think we're going to win the league every season, James. Uh, <laughs> even when even when we're in the Premier League. <laughs> <laughs> I, I had, somebody asked me about, you know, Saturday's game. Uh, Saturday nights, and I, 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 all I said, I thought we were, we were really good, and <laughs> he came out with a beauty. I'm, you know, uh, we've got to get past Drawnock, so that that's the new <laughs> nickname for him, Neil Drawnock. Look, what what have we played for? Five games. We've been, we've only been beaten once, which you know was a thriller at the Riverside. So. With the signings, like Dave said, let's let's get them in, give them till the end of September to get better in. I think this Hernandez is the key for us. Jones, Jones, like you say, if Ikpizu or the Sparara, if we're getting bodies into the box, we're, we're going to be a threat against any team. So I, I'm I'm very optimistic about the top six. I just want to see how we're, we're going to go with these new signings and. Like you say, if we can, we've been a bit loose at the back. If we can tighten up a bit more at the back, the goalkeeper doesn't fill with me confidence. But that that's been a problem since Randolph left. Mm-hmm. So, like you say, I, I still think we can be dreaming of a top six finish this season. But I, I dare say there's thousands of Championship fans saying the same about their club. That yeah. that's what I love about this league. You know what I mean? Yeah. When, when you're about top six there, like obviously we we can get it, we can do it, but obviously we'll know how the championship is and you're getting teams now like Birmingham for Sandini. It's yeah. just getting harder and harder every season. Kubi <laughs> after for Andre Green. It's it's gonna be rock hard. Obviously we can do it, believe and have hope. But every every season it just gets harder and harder. Yeah. And the longer you stay in it, do you know what I mean? Yeah, the, thing like is, Forrest, the thing is, the thing is, Franny Forrest being in the championship. Yeah, but the thing is, Franny, look, look how long Leeds were in it. You know, I know they won't be, they won't have been, they won't be away for too long. But look how long <laughs> they were in it. Uh, the, the only difference is this season, Franny is, we, we've had him a while now, and Warnock's, Warnock's proven uh, track record with promotions. We, we've just got to go with that, and we've just got to hope. Like I've said before, he can work his magic with our club and get us up. You know what I mean? What, what he done for Cardiff? They were they were one of the worst teams. The see when they went up that season, they were dreadful to watch. But he, he managed to get them up. You know what I mean? He always has a knack of getting teams up. So hopefully it's us. On the last show of last season, we were talking about potentially signing players like Hoyler and Journeyman, yeah. and, and we haven't, have we? Uh, we went out and bought. No unknown foreigners so i think a, a lot of credit has definitely got to go to the recruitment in the club for me do you think the, thing was, David, go on. there did seem a lot of the old palzac going on dave like you said patterson sol bamba junior oiler i thought god we're gonna to have to start talking welsh at the game you know what i mean but <laughs> it's uh like you say it's totally changed and i know they're not not household names are not names known too much around English football, but hopefully by the end of the season, everybody knows them. Yeah. And I was just going to mention, lads, as well, I think that's the beauty of the Championship and the league that it is. It's not like the Premier League where you know off the top of your head straight away who the top four or top six are going to be. Yes, the top two might be pretty predictable this year, maybe in the Championship, but it, it's certainly not beyond the realms of possibility that Borough a number of teams could make that top six this year is it Francis well no you just have to look at Barnsley last yeah. season yeah. That, that just says it all really doesn't it um, but not like you said any, anyone can get it Black, Blackpool Coventry us anyone it's just it's what you need in the, in the championship as we all know is a good run a good run of form and you could do obviously you're alright now we're not August September time but come Christmas time and onwards, that, that's when it like really starts to kick in. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, you're right, Matty. Uh, you're right, Franny. 
before we finish the show, boys, we'll just go back to the transfers. And I want you each to tell me who your signing of the summer has been from a Borough point of view. Who's the best signing that we've made? Who's our best acquisition? So, Tony, out of those 12 players, I know you're going to say Sammy Ami Yobi, but <laughs> who's your uh, best signing been from Borough? <laughs> our best signing, Sammy, Sammy Ami Yobi's physio, you know what I mean? Just keep him on the bench where he belongs, you know. Just keep giving him plenty of treatment. Uh, for me, up to now, obviously, the Argentinian kid, What we're into September now, we've played five games, we've hardly seen him, but the one that excites, excites me the most is uh, Hernandez. I, I'm really looking forward to seeing him in a Borussia shirt because I really did like watching him when he was playing for Norwich. Mm -hmm. But like you say, the, the, fine, the fine of the season up to now has got to be Isaiah Jones, he, he's been absolutely amazing since he came back to the club. But Hernandez is my favourite, you know, the one I'm looking forward to seeing the most. How about yourself, David? I think the best business we've done is probably Matt Crooks, just because there's a ver a vers a, you know, versatility. And But the one that excites me most is James Lee Salicki. Um I think we've got some player with some pedigree there. Um, Freddie, for you, mate. I'm gonna go with Piazza because right. I, I don't know. It's just something different. It's something fresh up front, and like we're saying, we've missed him against against Blackburn, and he might not get us between fifteen to twenty goals, but I think he will get back a few goals. And there's teams, there's players, sorry, in in other positions who can get more goals, like Alston, Tav, what more? But I'm gonna go. With, there's obviously there's, there's others like Hernandez, but. I don't know, just, I just felt like Piers was going to be a big sign on a free as well. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you came well. to go say Joe Lumley. Uh, no, I'm not going to go <laughs> Joe Lumley. I think in terms of value for money, and I mean, they've all been pretty shrewd ac acquisitions in terms of the loan to buy and stuff like that, but I like Matt Crooks. I think he brings a lot in terms of ability and physicality. He, he's just got everything for a, a good championship player. And I think... It, the fact that he wants to be here, that, that means a lot to me that you've got a player that's desperate to be here and desperate to do well. So I think he's a great signing. Um, but like you said, Tony, Hernandez really excites me. I haven't seen what he's done at Norwich before. And I think yeah. um, having two attacking players on each flank, I think that'll make us a, a really good side to watch this season, which, yes, results are what it's all about, but it's also good to see your team entertaining as well, isn't it, boys? Yeah, but like, like what Franny said there about Ick Piazzo, you know, I watched him at Fulham on the TV and he never filled me with any confidence whatsoever. But the two games I've seen him at the Riverside, he, he's totally won me over. I, I think he's, like you say, he's, he's different. He can hold the ball up. He's aggressive. And, and like I think, Franny, uh, uh, Dave, I think he will chip in with a few goals now, especially with, yeah. you know, the, the width and the firepower that Warnock's brought in. Mm -hmm. Being well, an Ash break's come at a really poor time, hasn't it? You know, it'd have been an ideal opportunity to get the lads on a bonding sessions and working yeah. on tactics and stuff. And then we've got our two new foreign signings away, McNair's away. And we've got now wait nine another nine days before we play a game. It's like, oh. yeah. I don't know if uh, Mrs. Warner could put up with another barbecue session down in Devon, though. That's the only thing. That's our bonding sessions now, isn't it, for the uh, club, David? So, I don't know if there's another one of them in the pipeline, maybe a mid-season break, I don't know. Get him down the tees, Barrage. <laughs> <laughs> I, think what we, I think what we can all agree on with this season and the transfer with no business, it, it's exciting. Like It's not as if we've just bought one, two or three players and we've brought 12 in. Do you know what I mean? And there's players yeah. who we've got who know the division inside out and with players from abroad who can have an impact. Do you know what I mean? Like, it's exciting. It's something different. Yeah. Not just playing any old crap. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, boys, unfortunately, we've run out of time for this week's show. Um, my thanks go out to Tony, David and Franny for joining me. And thanks, as always, to everybody watching and contributing out there. We hope you've enjoyed it. We'll be back at our usual time at 7 o'clock next Monday night uh, when we'll review the championship season as a whole so far. England's latest World Cup qualifiers and previews Borough's return to action away at the Coventry City on the following Saturday. So until then, from us all here at Borough Fan TV, enjoy the rest of your week and up the Borough.
Hop the Hop the